Hey guys, my name's Hannah. I'm on staff here at Harris Creek. I serve as the admin. Been here about five months. Before that, I was working at Pine Cove. Um, Brittany Taylor is my roommate, just to provide some context. Um, but at Waco Weekender, I'm gonna be talking about how to own your faith and specifically what it looks like to have a daily quiet time. Uh, some of you may not be familiar with what that looks like or what it could look like, and so I'll talk about kind of the purpose behind it and then even some practical tips on what it looks like.
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. What's up? My name is Lainey um, and I am here to talk to you guys about David today. Um, so David is one of my favorite characters in all of scripture. Character meaning he actually existed, but I have no other word to describe that. Um, I just think that he's always in his feels, which really relates to me. I'm always in my feels. Um, and I just think that he always is either hot or cold, up or down. Um, there's not really an in-between with him. Um, I also think that he seems like kind of like an artsy guy. Um, he played the harp. Um, for Saul, he danced in his underwear. It just seems like a very free-spirited guy. I kind of like that. And his story, I was thinking about this the other day, his story kind of reminds me of Captain America a little bit. Got the scrawny guy, heart of a warrior, um, and then the super secret serum, or super soldier serum, either way, um, is injected and he becomes this huge, mighty warrior um, that protects um, a big group of people. And that's kind of what David did, except instead of being injected with super soldier serum, secret anyways, he was in, kind of injected with the Holy Spirit. So I thought it was a very cool <laughs> way, way to put those two people together. Um, but basically today, um, kind of going along with the rest of the series is how um, Jesus is so similar to other people in scripture, but he's just 10 times better, a thousand times better than um, the person that we're talking about. So let's start off with some of the similarities. Um, first, both David and Jesus were both really underestimated. Um, first Samuel 16 is a story of the prophet Samuel going uh, to anoint the new king of Israel. And um, the father, Jesse, brings forward all his sons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and Samuel's like, got anyone else? Um, and here's where David comes along. Uh, David is a shepherd boy, really small guy, takes care of sheep. Um, but that, this is where God says, I look at the heart, man looks at the outside. Um, and that's when David was anointed. Not flashy guy at all. Um, and then similar to Jesus, he's born of a virgin um, in a small town of Nazareth, um, which is about 400 and 500 people. Um, back when Jesus was born, and that's about a fifth of Midway High School. So think about that to give you perspective. Um, he was a carpenter. There's really nothing flashy about him. Um, so they were both underestimated, but yet they did great things. Um, another similarity um, is that they were both dependent on their Heavenly Father and delighted in His presence. We see um, in Psalm 37, David writes, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. In verse 7, it says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in these ways, over the man who carries out evil devices. And in verse 25, he says, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I've seen the righteous, I've not seen the righteous forsaken, or his children begging for bread. Um, so he has learned uh, the importance of depending on his father for everything that he does. Similar to Jesus, we see him looks, it kind of looks like he's avoiding ministry um, to be with his father in the morning, to be away with him, uh, to learn more about him. 
Um, in John 15, it says, I am the true vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Um, and so Jesus learned that without his heavenly father, um, things would be a lot harder. <laughs> um, but we see that both of them delighted in his presence um, and both were dependent and relied on their heavenly father to provide for them. Um, so yes, David and Jesus, very similar um, when you look at it from big scope. Um, but now we're going to look at some of the differences. Um, and one of the differences, um, I think, that while David conquered kingdoms, slayed giants, became a great part of Jesus' lineage, he's only a, a person in the Bible. Um, his story ended and his reign eventually was passed to the next king, Solomon. Um, and I was reading in um, She Reads Truth, my devotional, and one of the writers said, the transfer of power from one mere human being to another betrays our weakness in its very act of impermanence. The fact that the Israelites needed another king because their king died. The fact that we need another president after four years and people die um, reminds us that we are weak and that we need a never-ending a never ending king. Um, and so Jesus, there's a stark contrast um, from David's reign as we read in Luke 1, 31-33. And this says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord of God and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom. There will be no end. Um, so we see that David, while a great king for the time that he was there, his time ended. He died and was passed on. Um, but we see that Jesus's reign never ends. So another difference that we can see between David and Jesus. Um, I think that when you're a king, you've got two roles to protect your people um, and to care for them. And we see that David was a warrior. Um, you can read in 2 Samuel 8, all of his victories. It says that while um, Saul killed thousands, David killed tens of thousands. Um, he cared for his people. He spared his pursuer Saul like multiple times when he totally could have killed him. And then he brought in his son, Saul's son, to live in his palace forever um, and to be, and he treated him like one of his sons. Um, but we also know the story of Bathsheba in 2 Samuel 11, um, where it says he stayed back when the kings went out to battle. He committed adultery and then murdered his friend. That's neither protecting or caring, in my opinion. Um, so we can see that he was a great man, but ultimately he failed um, as a king, um, which is such the opposite of our King Jesus. Um, we read in John 10 that Jesus lays down his life for his sheep. Um, and then all over scripture, it says um, that he has given his word. Uh, that scripture, it says in Hebrew 4.12, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the vision of soul and of spirit for joint and of marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So not only did he lay down his life to protect us um, from the enemy and from the end of the world and um, from going to hell. He also gave us his word um, that says it's a sharper than a two-edged sword. Um, so the, I think that alone, protecting. Um, and then it goes on to say all throughout scripture is that he, he had compassion on his people. Um, Jesus wept when his friend Lazarus died. Um, so we see that his heart is for his people to love and care and to protect, which is the perfect king. So we've seen throughout all this whole series um, is that Jesus has been the perfect priest, prophet, and now we see him as the perfect king. And so my challenge to you guys is what does that mean for us? What does it mean that Jesus is our perfect king? Um, are you allowing him to protect you? Are you allowing him to care for you? Are you allowing him to reign over your life as this perfect king? So I'm going to pray for us, um, and then I'm going to throw you guys into small group. Um, Father God, we thank you so much for today. Um, God, we thank you that you use people like David, um, like Moses, God, like me, um, who fail time and time again. God, thank you that you use people who aren't flashy, um, but God, you use people um, who delight in your presence, who are dependent on you. Um, Father, I just ask that as we go into small group, um, that we would learn more about you, that we would be reminded that you are the perfect king. Um, God, I ask that you would just allow our hearts to be open for you to sit on the throne of our life. Um, 
God reveal things to us that we need to change um, and encourage us where we need to be encouraged. God, we love you. We trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys.